Okay, hey guys, so I'm uh, going to do a build overview of this uh, 130 size frame that I reviewed a while back and it took me a while to get some of these parts in to make this build. So that's why it took a little while to do the build and um, just doing an overview for this one, not a full build because this one is not recommended for beginners, at least for this frame. And I'll explain why that is. Uh, it's pretty actually pretty easy to see here right off the bat. Um, I elected to go with a 4-in-1 um, uh, ESC on the bottom. It's a Racer Star 20 uh, 4-in-1 ESC with BL Heli S. And I've got the uh, Omnibus F3 flight controller there. And as you can see here, this carbon plate here that's holding up the uh, camera mount for the FPV camera barely allows any height in this stack here. And as you can see here, I don't even have the nylon screws for these standoffs here. Because the, the the way this uh, uh, carbon plate on the side plate here curves back, it barely fits in here. And I had to get very creative to uh, even get these components to fit in here. Uh, it's, a, it's only, uh, it's like maybe a centimeter off the uh, main plate here. So it's, it's, it, was, it was actually very tricky, not easy to do. But I was able to manage to get that all in there. Um... I'll go ahead and I'll pop this up. By the way, this is a Foxier uh, HS 1177 camera. One of the reasons I wanted to get this frame is so I can get a regular uh, full-size CCD camera in here into a 130 size frame that wasn't one of those uh, squished ones where everything's stacked into a very tall little box. I wanted something a little bit more like this. It's kind of a QAVX style uh, camera mounting system, but as you can see here, there's very limited room underneath there in, in terms of the camera space. So. Go ahead and pop this off, and I've uh, put this together so that everything is easily d disconnected. So I got a little camera there, or a little connector here to the camera, the FPV camera, and I have that soldered to the board. There's a video in and video out for the OSD, and that that goes to uh, my Amway uh, 200 milliwatt uh, video transmitter. And I'm not going to use this until I just that's what stock in turn came with. I'm going to use something else. I am uh, using this micro receiver, the FSA8S for FlySky, so I can use my Eternity Evolution. And as you can see, just the two screws in the back here holding the flight controller on, and I can't even put the screws in the front. But uh, uh, it should uh, be okay. Uh, as you can see, I use the 4 in 1 ESC. It's a nice clean build here to these uh, Emacs 1306 uh, 4000 kV red bottom motors. It's uh, going to be pretty fast. And I'm using some heat shrink here on the arms to just hold down the motor wire so to keep things nice and neat. So uh, using that I, instead of electrical tape. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple build. Uh, I just have to um, put my uh, battery uh, sticky pads on the bottom here for the, uh, I'll use the AD54S battery. I recommend that if you do this build that you put the battery strap in first. So you don't have to go through the trouble that I did and have to disassemble everything to put the battery strap in. So uh, just keep that in mind because uh, there's these slits here on the side and you can't get that strap in once you put the PDB and flight controller on. So something to be aware of. But let me go ahead and put this together and I'll get a final weight for this. Okay guys, I got it on the scale. It's totally assembled now with the props and everything. And it's about 170 grams, about 170, 71 grams. So pretty light. Especially with that 4-in-1 ESC on there. Saves a lot of weight. Let me uh, go over the final assessment here. I'm using uh, this Fox here um, mini antenna here. It's an SME antenna. Instead of the, the uh, linear antenna that the Amway transmitter comes with. And I'm running my um, FlySky receiver antenna through the bottom here. There's a little hole. I'm just going to let it uh, come out the back. And that usually works pretty good for me. And as you can see, no space there between the flight controller and the frame, but it's uh, fits and just barely. And we got some uh, Gem Van three bladed props here. These were 3035s. Very minimal clearance here between the frame and the end of the prop here. And also in the front, you can see very, very limited. Clearance here, I would say like a millimeter. 
In fact, I tried some of the Dell uh, 3045 props and they were touching the side plate here, so you can't use those. So be aware of what kind of props you have and what can you, you can use. This is what the bottom looks like. Got the uh, battery sticky pads on here. Got my battery strap. Here's a look at the back where the video transmitter is. I just have it zip tied to the two um, uh, side posts here and it's a pretty tight fit. Uh, I got my wires out of the way over there so they should be okay. And um, I have an option to put a camera here. I might put my Mobius Mini up here or maybe my maybe even a run cam um, HD or maybe even a GoPro session. Something I'll have to figure out how to mount this here but something We'll probably go up here and uh, get some HD video, but for the maiden, I'll just do uh, the uh, onboard Fox here, HS 1177 video. And I'll go ahead and I'll fly it now, so you're running some uh, flight footage for you here now. Okay, I'll just do a little bit of line of sight first. Let's see how it looks in the air. Okay. Not good. Okay guys, I'm back at the park with the GB130 and I fixed the board orientation problem. That's caused the, caused the flip over yesterday, or two days ago. Uh, it rained yesterday. So, gonna give it another go and hopefully uh, we get some uh, good video this time. Okay, that looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and fly it. FPV. Oscillation there on a full throttle punch out. I think my P game might be a little bit high. You know that my props are, are really unbalanced. But the rolls are really smooth. Yeah, we're getting oscillation there. A little bit of prop wash. Wash there. So I think we could use a little bit more D gain, a little less P gain. It's, otherwise it's very smooth.
voltage is getting a little low. I think I'll bring it in, try another battery. much oscillation on the throttle up. A little bit still. This is without any DID changes. Stop on a dime. Okay guys, so yeah, this thing flies exceptionally well. Just needs a little bit more tuning. Uh, I think I need to lower the P a little bit, maybe increase the D. The, the, the rolls are very, this is very snappy and the rolls and, and flips, they snap and they stop on a dime. So they, it works really good. On full throttle punch outs, there's some oscillation. I wasn't able to get into the PID uh, changing menu in, in the OSD for some reason. I think I might have not enabled that feature. So I'll have to, uh, check that, but uh, um, I can just, I, I, it should be a pretty simple change. Otherwise, I think this flies really good. Um, let me know if you guys want to see more videos of this and anything you want, uh, like, you know, in terms of like uh, requests for demos or anything like that. Let me know. Uh, I'll try and make that happen. Anyway, you guys, I uh, hope you like this little review. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of the frame and let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.